Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair a variety of different size defects in a wooden plank like this, ranging from about five to 10 millimeters wide using 3C smooth finish and then tackling more large damaged sections like this one using 3C's two-part epoxy resin wood repair. Now, preparation is very important. These huge big pieces of timber I've got here are cut at three meters in length. They're about 600 millimeters wide, and then we've had them purposely planked, cut at 50 millimeters in depth. So we're making some beautiful tabletops with them. However, we've got quite a lot of damage in there and they do need repairing. As you can see here, this is, well, pretty much rotted and fallen away. When this tree stood upright, it was getting defected at the bottom and basically it was killing the tree and becoming dangerous, so it had to be cut down. Once we cut it down and planked it up, we realized there was a lot of areas damaged which need repairing. So I'm gonna to start to take away all this dead wood off the sides here. I'm gonna to have to do it on both sides as well. You can actually hear, look, you can see the damage in there. Well, we wanna take that out, of course. Right, I think I'm ready to turn this over now and have a look at what it's looking like the other side. This is going to be the underside of the table. We've already started to prepare these, so it is sanded down a little bit better on the other side. Let's assess the damage. Okay. So this, as you can see, has been prepared a little bit more. It's already been sanded down, and this is what we're going to see from the top of it. So we've got to establish which bits of these I'm going to leave in and which have got to come out, like this, for instance, loose bits. So I think I've got off as much as I can now by using the chisel. I'm going to turn to a grinder with a sanding pad on it now just to soften these edges off that little bit better. And that allows the resin then to mould around it and bond to it, key to it better. Now the damaged area of the wood is cleared and prepared. We're ready to apply the primer. Now I've got a two-part resin primer from 3C, which I'm going to mix to a ratio of one to one. Give them a good shake up and then I'm going to measure it out. One, two, three. Same again. One, two, three. Now I'm going to apply this on all the edges where the resin is going to bond to just using a paintbrush. Now this is the underside of the table, so I don't have to be that neat. This is just about the strength, making sure that that resin bonds to the edges of this timber. Okay, so that's my primer on. Now I can kind of assess the depth of this and the size of the damage. What I think I might do is cut a piece of wood and actually splice it in here. So I'm not using as much of the actual wood repair resin in there. But if I can splice a piece in relatively tight, maybe fix it to the sides, apply the resin all the way around it and let it set and that way, it'll be nice and solid. I can turn it over and do the section on the top of the table where it's gonna be seen. Okay, so that is the primer applied. I'm gonna leave this to dry for at least 20 minutes and that's in normal conditions. And then I can start to mix my two-part wood repair to apply. Now I'm ready to mix my two-part wood repair. Now, if I was mixing a small amount, I could just do it on a mixing board here with my spatulas and it would be fine. However, I have got large areas to fill. Two sections on this piece, two on the board behind me, and even more 
to make this large table up. So I'm just going to mix uh, in a bowl using the two parts. We've got part A and part B. They need to be mixed equally. So I'm going to use up the full reservoirs here. I'll take the lids off them both, cut the tops off them. Okay, there we have two full reservoirs emptied into one bowl. Give this a good mix up. Okay, now that is the colour we're looking for. One nice solid consistent colour. And then it's ready to apply. Now I'm using a plastic spatula to squash the wood repair deep into the groove. This only takes a couple of minutes to fill the cavity, making sure that you don't get any air gaps in there. Once you fill the void, start to smooth this off over the surface, leaving it to stand proud from the surface by about one or two millimeters. Now this plank of wood that we're repairing to make our tabletop does have a number of defects throughout it. Hence the reason I've mixed up a lot of wood repair. Once it's mixed, you do have a good 15 minutes to apply it before it starts to react. Drying times may vary with different times of the year and on different surfaces. Now I mentioned earlier about saving some of the two part filler as opposed to filling this huge big void here. So I've cut off just a couple of pieces of off cut timber, which is quite a good size. It'll press in there and it falls just short of the top surface of there and another piece across there. Now at this point, I don't have to be concerned about what this looks like. This is going to be the underside of the table. The purpose behind this is for two reasons. One is to hold the wood repair in position and stop it falling through. And also just fill out some of the voids in there so we don't use up as much. Now I've drilled a couple of holes in these. I'm just going to apply a small amount of Max Bond to help hold them into position. There we go. And then I'm going to drive a couple of screws right through this piece into the main tabletop itself. There we go. This will, of course, be cut off and shaped around when needed. This will go along here. So, that, quite solid fixed in there now. That Max Bond will obviously hold it into place. I can now apply just some of the two part fill around it, stiffen it all up. Once it dries, it dries like concrete. Then once I turn that over, we've got a nice solid base there where I can apply more of the two part filler over the surface and bring it up to the top surface of the table. So that's all the large areas now filled with the two part wood repair. So now I'm gonna turn my attention to the smaller minor defects in the wood and mix up some two in one smooth finish. I'll mix this up on a mixing board, as I squeeze that, it'll start to come out both sides. And then now we mix our two in one. Okay, so that looks like it's all mixed. One perfect color. I'm ready to apply. I tend to apply it on. And then make it a little bit higher than the finished flat surface on here. And then scrape any excessive off from around it to make it a bit easier. Then we come to sand it. That's done. What we'll do is leave it to dry. Now I've got a number of defected areas here. This has been filled with the two part and it's probably about three millimeters away from this top surface on there. This stands about 120 in length and about from two or three millimeters deep probably down to about five or six mil there and a couple of small cracks here as well so I'll start with this one first I'm going to give that one because it has got a wood repair in it just give the surface a tiny little scratch with a bit of soft sandpaper 
Now these tabletops may look a little bit different. They've had some TLC. We've given them a heavy sanding down all the way over the top surface to make them nice and smooth. And I've also took off some of the corners here. I've got a three and a five year old who's got a tendency of accidentally running into the edge of things. So I thought I'd just soften that off. I drawn a circle on the end, cut it out with a jigsaw. Then I got my belt sander, belt sanded across the edge, and then the normal orbital sander across it, just making it nice and smooth and beveling this edge that little bit more. So these planks now are pretty much prepped, ready for the resin table, except our two-part wood filler and smooth finish, which is now dry. I'm gonna start by using my belt sander. That'll take off all these heavy lumps of the filler until it takes it closer down to the wood. The next stage, I'll use a more finer sander, just a square or round orbital sander. And this will take it down that little bit closer, making the surface smoother. Do wear safety specs and a dust mask when doing any sanding down. Now for my second plank, I decided to bring it outside due to the amount of sanding that was required. And especially when you're using large power tools like belt sanders. Not only did I need to sand down the wood repair, but the main edges of the plank as well. With my wood drying out and sanding down quite lightly, I'm deciding to scorch it a little bit with a blowtorch. This is a quick and easy method to darken your timber. I brought the planks in from outside. All the, the heating or the scorching or burning around the outside is now complete. I wanted to try and get a bit more of a darker wood. I wanted it a nice smooth finish, but I wanted to blend in with something like this or even this behind me here because it is going to be living in this room. It's the office table for our new office. However, where we've got the two-part wood repair filler in here, I'm going to have to stain that and make that a little bit darker because when we do the river resin table in the center, that clear resin is going to come right across the top surface as well. And I am going to see that that's going to kind of stand out that little bit more. If I was glossing these, undercoating and priming them, you could just paint over it and you wouldn't see it at all as if you were doing windows or doors. It's perfect. But when you are staining something or putting a clear resin over the top of it, you have got to then try to stain it and get a darker colour. So I've got a small paintbrush. I'm getting a little bit of the stain on the end. And then I'm going to apply it on here. I'll dip my paintbrush in, get a little bit on the end, and then I'm just going to start to make this kind of lighter area a little bit darker. I'm just going to blend that in. And you can see straight away that the wood repair is going darker. I'm going to leave that to dry, then I'll assess it because you may need to put a little bit more on depending on how dark you want to get it. But I'm going to turn my attention to the other repairs. So that's the neat, the undiluted dye now applied onto all the wood repaired areas and it's drying off. What I have done is diluted that down into water-based one and I've diluted the dye probably with about 60-70% water. So it's going to look a little bit more wet and darker when I apply it. But all I'm going to do now is generally go all around the areas like this. So we're putting a tiny, tiny little bit in on it and hopefully that should just take the emphasis off that being a little bit darker than the rest of it. So now they're ready to lay down into position and build the shutter, ready to pour the resin. Now this is my first resin project, so I am taking precautions. I put a plastic sheet down on the floor, followed by dust sheets, all taped down. I'm also laying some strips of MDF right down the center. That's gonna be the center channel where my two timbers join with the resin. The MDF sheets need to be glued down and sealed to both edges of your tabletop planks. Look at these beauties. Some of these hand tools have been getting used for over 200 years. They're gonna be placed through the valley of my tabletops and then covered with the resin.
So now it's time to mix up the resin. Start with a clean bowl, a stick for stirring, and then check the instructions to work out your measurements before you start mixing. Now the resin I'm using is TriCast 50 from TriCell. But before you start mixing, do check the instructions to make sure you get your quantities mixed perfect. Stir it nice and slowly to avoid any bubbles. And it's also worth checking out their website for technical details. Now it's mixed, slowly start to pour it through your channel and see it rise up the side and the depth of your planks. This can be poured in one go or a number of layers. So that's my resin table now complete. I'm sure you will agree, it looks fantastic. Now, if you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channels. But if you just want to know more about the vast range of products that Free Sea stock, head over to their website. Thank you.